Oh, me, oh my. So arrays, arrays give me a headache. Arrays give me a headache. But, but they also help me answer the questions that I care about. Uh, so the project that I've currently been working on is I've set up this, uh, this little computer as a Linux server. And my question, what I've been trying to figure out is can I use Bluetooth addresses essentially as an identifier for physical human beings and then track those physical human beings based off of that identifier. Uh, one of the big things in the computer world is is many times we don't actually track the thing, we track the identifier for the thing. So this is very important to understand. You give permissions not to the person, but to the identifier. You track not the head of lettuce, but the identifier for the head of lettuce. Um, and so that's one of the big things is essentially how can you, how can you come up with a unique identifier uh, to separate all, out all of the individuals in a group or whatever else so that you can then track them. And so my idea, my idea was, hey, maybe we can do that with uh, Bluetooth addresses. So uh, uh, the concept was you have multiple of these servers around a facility or a city or something like that. They're constantly scanning uh, for these Bluetooth addresses. Uh, and then as they pick up the Bluetooth addresses, if these are uh, a unique address, then you could then track, you could track the folks. Uh, and so what I did here is um, I created the script so basically it uses Bluetooth CTL, it scans, uh, it scans the environment for Bluetooth addresses, it then dumps uh, the values into a MySQL database. Uh, so this is a, a table called log. We have the ID uh, for this particular record. We have a timestamp for this record. We have the picture that's taken. So every time the script runs, it takes a picture. Uh, and we have all of the Bluetooth addresses uh, that have been detected, right? So this is all in a MySQL database. And so, uh, yesterday, what I worked on, it seemed like this was going up pretty well. So these are all the different scans that I did yesterday. And as we can see, this is the uh, the, 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 the timestamp uh, for when the scan was done. Nine devices were found. And here are all the Bluetooth addresses for the devices found. Uh, we have another timestamp here. Nine devices found. Bluetooth addresses. And if we scroll down, we see about nine devices found. So here we get 10. And here we get 8. And here we get 9. And here we get 10. And here we get 12. Uh, but those fluctuations could be based off of whether the devices were discoverable right at that moment in time, uh, the length of the time that I was doing scan. So once we get down here to 12 found, I actually increased the scan time. Uh, so if it has longer to scan for, it'll probably find more devices. But more, uh, more or less, it's like, okay, this is pretty good. So in my environment, more or less, there are nine of these Bluetooth devices to be detected. Uh, the question though, the question that, that came up is from a security standpoint, standpoint uh, to keep, basically to keep people like me from doing what I'm trying to do, uh, Bluetooth actually has these private randomized addresses. So they actually, they actually broadcast a private randomized address. Um, out uh, for people to try to connect to. And then it periodically, it periodically then updates uh, the address with the idea so people don't use these addresses uh, to track folks. And so one of my questions here, one of my questions was, okay, um, I see all these addresses and I see the count is about the same, but are these addresses here, like are they the same nine addresses or are they different nine addresses? Uh, so I came up with a script this morning to find out, sadly, my plan won't work. <laughs> My plan won't work. Uh, so these are all the devices that are so that have so far been found um, within the MySQL database. We can see devices found are 37. So it's not nine, not 10, not 12, 37. So this is way out of bounds. Uh, and this shows me uh, the address. And then it actually shows me how many times this address has been seen. So this address has been seen three times. This address has been seen 12 times. This address has been seen 10 times, five times, six times, one time, so that we can see, we can see as far as the updating of the randomized address, it, it may stick around for a little while. It may actually be around for a little bit of time, 
but probably not a long, long amount of time, right? We see these seen once, seen twice, seen four times. So we probably can't use the Bluetooth addresses as a unique identifier uh, for probably anything more than a couple of minutes. And so again, like this, this kind of project is a type of thing that you can do uh, just to just to, to prove whether or not something will work. Again, it's not whether well, it's not whether or not the project is successful. It's the lessons you learn from the particular project. Uh, what was kind of curious for me is I got to play with arrays a little bit more. I really don't like arrays. Can I be honest with you? I hate arrays. But you know, when you hate something, that's probably something you need to learn more of. And so what I decided to do here to do this count thing is I decided to create what is called an associative array or a key array. Uh, so normally in array, you have place zero equals a value place one equals a value, place two equals a value. That's the key. Zero is the key, one is the key, two is the key. You can actually name the key. Uh, so in this array, I actually name the key, whatever the Bluetooth address is, and then we have the value. So this is the key with a value of six, and that's how I'm able to do the whole counting process. If we go over here and we take a look at the script, we can see my ugly ass coding. So this is the SQL statement, select a BT underscore list from log. So this is log is the table, BT underscore list is the column, result equals basically a SQL statement. I then create a uh, associate array here, or a named key array here of key underscore array array two equals array. I'm using a uh, key underscore array up, uh, up further in the, uh, the code. And then basically what we're going to do here is while we step through the array. So basically result is a result from the SQL statement. And we're going to go through and we're going to, to fetch uh, from, from the, the MySQL uh, database. Uh, beat, uh, dollar sign BT all equals row, a BT list. So basically here, when we step through the MySQL, right? So we're stepping through each line. So we're going to go from this record to this record, to this record, to this record, to this record. We're only looking for the BT underscore list here, right? So that's going to be the row uh, value. Uh, so that is going to go to the to variable bt uh, underscore all. Then what we're going to do is this, if you notice, this is actually a string. So it's a string with an array. So what we need to do is we need to explode that string. We need to turn this string into an array. So therefore, we use the explode function. That's what it does. It turns a string into an array. We're going to separate all of the values by comma. So these are comma separated values. If you take a look there. Um, and then we're going to feed it the string BT all, and then we're going to um, assign those values to the address array now. Then we're going to step through the address array. So the address array, basically the values that come up are X. And then this is kind of interesting. This is a function uh, I just started playing with today. So what this does is it looks whether a named key exists within an array. So what we're going to do here is if not, so exclamation point means not. If basically the key doesn't exist in the array, so this is the value here that we exploded. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna explode out each individual Bluetooth address, right? So that's a Bluetooth address there. So if the Bluetooth address as a key does not exist with this within this associate array, then we are going to create the value, so dollar sign key underscore array two, at, at that value, right, that Bluetooth address, the Bluetooth address, and we're going to have it equal one. So if this Bluetooth address is not within the array, we are going to create a named key for that address and assign the value of that address to be one. Else, so basically that key is in the array, and then a, a key underscore array two, that, that Bluetooth address is going to equal um, basically that, the, the, what we're talking about here, the value there, plus one. So basically we're just going to add one to it if it does exist. Uh, and then from there, we're just going to simply come down. We're going to echo out. We're going to account all of the values that are in the, uh, the, the named key that we created. And then we're going to print out the key, um, that, which is the Bluetooth address and the value. Oh, and that's where we get here. We print out the Bluetooth address and the value. And so we've seen some Bluetooth addresses have shown up 12 times and some Bluetooth addresses have shown up one time and four times and so on and so forth. And so this is how 
This is how you can go from um, basically taking taking a string. So so within the MySQL database table, within a single um, field or whatever um, of that 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 table, you can actually contain a lot of information, right? So you actually you take all of these different Bluetooth addresses and basically you just put them in there as a comma separated value. And then what you can do is then you can pull them out, explode them, turn them back into an array, uh, and then do fancy cool things with them. Uh, and again, so this is kind of useful for that whole counting deal, right? So anytime you have a unique ad identifier, maybe people, um, so let's say, uh, Oh, let's say, uh, so for Silicon Dojo, let's say imagine Silicon Dojo and here, let's say I had the class date. Uh, here I had the class title, I had some other stuff. And then what if here, instead of having Bluetooth addresses, I simply had the identifiers for everybody who attended uh, that particular class. So student one, student two, student three, student four, student five, the whole nine yards, right? Well, what if later I wanted to see, you know, what student, what student came to the most classes or what student came to the least classes? Uh, by doing this whole mess here, then instead of having Bluetooth addresses showing up, then I could have um, students. So I could see, oh, this student has been to the most classes or this student has been to the least classes. Um, one of the things too with this is um, within the SQL, right? Within the SQL, uh, since this is a, uh, you know, select uh, BT list from log, uh, if I wanted to have this for a shorter period of time, if I wanted to um, basically segment this by time, like within the last month, within the last day or whatever else, I could basically have, um, oh, select BT list from log where uh, timestamp is, um, where timestamp is, I don't know, within the last day or something. <laughs> My brain is cooked. I already had to deal with the rays this morning. You know what I'm saying? And so you can actually use this SQL statement uh, to limit. So within the past hour, within the past day, within the past month, within the past year, uh, and then and then when this comes up, it would be limited by whatever you put in there. Uh, so anyways, yeah, this is how, again, why I do these particular videos. This kind of shows you how you do projects. The thing that I'm interested with now is, again, more that whole idea of maybe, maybe counting, counting during the day. So this scans, and so I can know, okay, at 11 o'clock, uh, 11 devices were found. Okay, at 12 o'clock, 30 devices were found. What I'm kind of interested at now is can we can we just use this number? So instead of trying to individually track users, can we use the Bluetooth addresses as basically an in, easy way of of creating some kind of activity monitor uh, uh, monitor in the physical world? So so you, you can see okay, more people were in this area at noon, less people were in this area. So on, so on and so forth. And you don't necessarily have to have a camera. Maybe this could be, you know, maybe you could use, use it this way. I'm also thinking about maybe like hotspots. So one of the things I'm not showing here is when you scan for the Bluetooth addresses, you can actually get um, the, the signal strength. So signal strength means something is closer, you know, obviously. So if it's a stronger signal, that Bluetooth device is closer to the server. If it's a weaker signal, the Bluetooth device is farther away. So one of the interesting ideas is could we use, could we use Bluetooth for triangulation? Uh, and then could you use like Bluetooth for like heat mapping, right? So imagine, imagine if you have a store or imagine if you have a school, or whatever else. Imagine if you put these Bluetooth trackers around your environment, then it could track not just the, um, the, the addresses that it sees, but it could also detect the strength. And then based off that strength, maybe you could have a heat map um, of, of your environment and you could see where, where people are more likely to go, how people you know, flow through, through in the whole nine yards. So that's, that's a thought. I don't know. I'm just playing. This is the nice part about my job. My job right now is like literally just trying to come up with interesting projects. Hey, can we come up with a project that is curious? 
How do you make money off of it? I have no clue. <laughs> My job is to come up with curious things. So anyways, so a little bit, a little bit of a lesson there on how uh, arrays work and uh, the, the continuation of this Bluetooth address project. Uh, again, if you do like these videos, make sure to thumb up or thumb down. Remember, it's social media world. They don't care if it's a good interaction or a bad interaction. All they care is an interaction. Please give us a thumbs up. Please give us a comment. Please subscribe. Try to prove anybody gives a damn about actual technology. And with that, I'll see you all later.